بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه. So another quick teaching moment here. Um, I wanted to address some of the questions that people had as it referred to um, the decision of Isna to uh, confer an award upon a person who is a kafir, right? Who is a, not a Muslim. And it, that wasn't the issue. The issue was that they named the award the Abu Talib Award. And uh, I had said that this this is a puzzling uh, turn of events. And once again, people came saying, well, wait a minute, you know, um, Abu Talib, I heard that Abu Talib uh, didn't die as a kafir. I heard that Abu Talib, uh, uh, that he confessed his faith at the very end. And of course, there's many problems with this. And then some people said, well, you know, according to this tradition, according to this Shi'i tradition, and it should, you know, we, we have gotten into kind of a quagmire with all of this traditional things, right? And, and, and I'm all for tradition, but the most important part of tradition is seeking out which is the truth. And that we do not say, well, this is just a tradition, right? And so if we look at the reports that surround the demise of the uncle of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is clear that the jamhur, that the opinions of Ahl Sunnah is that he died a kafir, that he did not uh, somehow uh, secretly uh, confess. And so um, I wanted to present this in a very simple, clear light because some people were confused um, as to how we can understand how Indeed, we can believe with confidence that Abu Talib indeed did pass away on that which was other than Islam. He passed away upon essentially the religion of his forefathers of the pagan Arabs, which was shirk. And so we can look to a number of narrations. For instance, we can look in Sahih Muslim in which it is narrated that the Prophet ﷺ stated that, in, in, and he was actually asked about this, uh, about his uncle, right? And so we, we have, for instance, a hadith that is related by Al-Harath uh, bin uh, Nawfal, radiallahu an. And so he relates, he said, Qala, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Hal nafata abatala bi shay? Haven't you, being the messenger of Allah, and that you have the ability to intercede, of course, من يشفع عنده إلا بإذني, right, as Allah Ta'ala says, for instance, in Ayat al-Kursi, you know, who is it that can intercede on anyone's behalf unless it's with his, per, with his permission, إلا بإذني. Right, and so you know, weren't you able to bring any benefit or intercede on behalf of your uncle? After all, you are the messenger of Allah. Right, I mean, uh, he used to uh, he used to shelter you and he used to support you, right? Uh, and so. The idea of uh, al harb bin Nawfal here is good because it shows that, you know, this is how people think. Well, he was a good person, right? In fact, you could say that uh, al harb bin Nawfal, uh, radiallahu an, he's bringing the good person argument, right? Wasn't Abu Talib a good person, right? He did good things and therefore, right, uh, being that you are the messenger of Allah, yeah, you know, he didn't pray, he didn't do these things, he didn't believe in Allah on the last day and the angels, and more important, he did not publicly confess and attest to you being the messenger of Allah, but he was a good person, right? So in many ways, 
What's, what's a good teaching lesson about this particular hadith is that uh, Al-Harath bin Nawfal, again, anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, is bringing the good person argument about the one who dies upon other than Islam, but did some nice things in their life. فَإِنَّهُ كَانَ يُحُطُوكَ وَيَغْضَبُ لَكَ You know, he, didn't he protect you and shelter you? قَالَ صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام He said, yes, indeed, he did do those things. Wa, And here the wa means وَلَكِن right? وَهُوَ فِي ضَحْدَاحٍ مِنَّا But he is in the lowest part of the hellfire. وَلَوْلَا أَنَ لَكَانَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ And that, you know, if when I went and, 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 and found him, he would have otherwise, if I had not interceded on his behalf, right, that he would have what? وَلَوْلَا أَنَ لَكَانَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنْ نَارِ He would have been in the lowest part of the fire. And so Imam Nawawi comments here. He says, "Ma huwa al-dahdah?" Right? What is this place called the dahdah? He says, "Ma rakka min al-ma'i 'ala al-wajh al-ardi ila nahw al-ka'bayn wa istu'iru fi nar And so it is the place where water can kind of pull and collect around the ankles, right? And some of this is insinuated from the sweat of being in the fire. But then also we know that there is a scalding hot drink in the fire. And so it will collect and it will boil uh, in his lower extremities and it will cause his brain essentially to, to boil. And then in another one, and this one is from related to us by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiallahu an, right? he says, Abu Talib. And so he said that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about his uncle. قَالَ لَعَلَّهُ تَنْفَعُهُ شَفَاعَةِ الْيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Right? If my, sh- if my intercession had not taken place, of course by Allah's permission, on Yom Al-Qiyamah, لَيُجْعَلُوا فِي ضَحْدَحْ مِنْ نَارِ Right? He, he would have wound up being in the lowest part. Instead, right, he is now in the, uh, he would have been the deepest part of the fire, but instead now he is in the lowest part, right? Uh, and he says, يَلْبُغُوا كَعْبَيْهِ وَيَقْلِي مِنْهُ دِمَاغُهُ And right again, going to, to that. And then another one, he talks about how if he had not interceded, that indeed he would have been in the deepest part of the fire, uh, and so we can look at these now. You might say, "Well, wait a minute." And this is from the 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 flawed Shi'i perspective: is that they will say, "Oh, these are these are uh, uh, these are narrators who are part of some grand Umayyad conspiracy." And so you look at. It. Let's go back to the first one, right? حدثنا عبيد الله ابن عمر القواري القواري right when you look what صدوق وثقة this is a this is a reliable transmitter well what about محمد ابن عبد بكر المقدمي ثقة what about محمد ابن ابن عبد الملك الأموي الأموي ثقة and on and on and on you go look at the رجال Saduq wa thiqa. And so there's nothing to support this idea of there being an issue with the transmission. No. And so the Prophet Sallallahu tells us indeed that this is what transpired. That indeed he is in the shallowest part of the fire. And in fact, in another narration... He tells us that if he had not made this intercession on his behalf, he would have been in the lowest part of the fire. He would have been in the lowest part of the fire. And so we should, uh, 
which if we're going to say it's Shi'i tradition, well, what is the Shi'i tradition basing itself on? You can't just say, well, this is Sufi tradition, Salafi tradition, Maliki tradition, Shi'i tradition, Maturidi tradition, Ethari tradition, and then somehow that does away with the need for the akhbar to be sih, like to, to be sahih. Like you can't have the khabar, like uh, the report, it doesn't matter. This is our tradition. No, it, it, whether you are Shi'i, Sufi, Salafi, whatever, you have to bring your adillah that supports that argument. And so the attack against the veracity of the transmitters is it, it, there's no substantiation to it. And so, as we can see, indeed, the Prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam says that his uncle was indeed in the shallowest part of the fire as a means of Allah. That was the furthest that Allah allowed the intercession to go, that he will be lightly punished, but he will still be punished and he is still kafir and he is in the fire and he will not exit. He will not exit. Now, we can also look at another report that will help us put this into also some context here because uh, this is quite important. And so if we look for instance, Make sure I have my bookmark right here. And so, uh, let me bring this one back. One page, 54, 55. Here we go. So, in this one, this is found in the Kitab of Salah, uh, the, the Kitab, I'm sorry, the Kitab of Janais. This one is found in Sahih Muslim. And it's in the book of. Uh, in the book of funerals. Now what's interesting about this is that people are saying that, oh, Abu Talib died a Muslim somehow, right? But didn't profess it publicly. So my question would be, if that is the case, that he professed his, he recanted his, uh, his, his beliefs and he embraced Islam upon his deathbed uh, and believed. So my question would be, when al Janaza? Where was the Janaza? Where was his Khabar? If he indeed passed away as a believer, then where is there a report that the Prophet ﷺ prayed Janaza for him? And where is there a report that's reliable that he prayed Janaza for him? Uh, we do not find that, but we do find that with another hadith of another person. And so, for instance, in this one, and this one is brought to us by Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. Radiallahu anhu. He said, "Anna imra'atan sauda'a kanat taqum al masjida, aw shabban, fa fakhdaha Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So there was, as it's related in the report, there was a some say a young black girl, and another it was not clear. It may have been even a young black boy that used to come and uh, sweep and clean the masjid, right? But this person was treated in such a way that people didn't regard his or her. Most of the report says her, but again, in the some, some thought it may have been even a boy because it was so to the masses of the people, to the some of the companions and to the... They didn't think this person anything significant, right? However... فَفَقَدَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ فَسَهَرَ فَسَهَرَ عَنْهَا And so, what, and one day, this person wasn't there. And so the Prophet ﷺ, so missing her, asked about her. Where is she? Right? As it says, أَوْ عَنْهَا It might have been a boy, but the stronger evidence, it was a young black girl. فَقَالُوا مَتْ And they said, he or she, they passed away. Right? قَالَ أَفَلَا كُنْتُمْ آذَنْتُمُونِي He says, well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you inform me? فَقَالَ كَأَنَّهُمْ صَغَّرُوا أَمْرَهَا And he said, what? Because, you know, he said, you guys 
you didn't take you didn't think this person was an important person. You didn't take them seriously, and you kind of treated them as a, as a minor affair. And so he said, "Sabguru amraha aw amrahu." فَقَالَ دُلُّونِي عَلَى قَبْرِهِ أَوْ قَبْرِهَا Therefore, take me immediately to this person's grave. And so they took the Prophet ﷺ to the grave. فَدَلُّوهُ فَصَلَّ عَلَيْهَا So he went to the grave and prays over her. ثُمَّ قَالَ إِنَّ هَذِهِ الْقُبُورَ مَمْلُوءَةٌ ظُلْمَةٌ Right, that these had the ظُلْمَةً عَلَى أَهْلِهَا that these graves are dark, and they are they are they are dark for their and full of darkness for their inhabitants. Well, in Allah Azza wa Jalla, you know, we rohala hum bi salati alayhim. But Allah Taala, the majestic and the high, He illuminates their graves by way of me praying for them. And so, this young girl, who people didn't think were important. The Prophet ﷺ went and is reported to have prayed the janazah for a person that they weren't even sure. We think it was a girl, but it could have been a boy because maybe also at that age, eh, you can't really tell. They may have been very, very small. And they're like, that's just some kid. He went to the grave and prayed for this child. Now you're telling me for a child that people didn't even know the name and were not even 100% sure if it was a boy or a girl, mostly a girl, but maybe a boy, and yet he went and prayed for a child, but is not reported to have prayed the Janaza for his uncle. And so... You may say, well, you know, what does it matter? You know, Isna does their thing and, 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 you know, what does it matter? Well, this is why it matters. Well, number one, the truth always matters. We always want to make sure that what we're doing is, you know, according to the truth. But more importantly, I am concerned about the continued um, secularization of the Muslim mind, particularly in the West, that wants to downplay the differences from people. It doesn't matter whether you're a Muslim, a Christian, we all believe in the same thing, right? And as long as you're a good person, that's the argument that what? Al-Harath ibn al-Nawfud radiallahu an brought to the Prophet sallam. He's basically bringing the argument, hey, you know, like, that person was a good person, right? And he was like, uh, yes, that is true. But he is what? But he is also in the fire. And he will not emerge from the fire. And so what we find is an inconsistency in narrative. And also an inconsistency in the behavior of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We also find, for instance, you take the verses in uh, uh, Surah, um, God, here I'm having my senior moment here, i got to have more coffee, um, Al-Muddathir, right? You take the verses in Surah Al-Muddathir, and so Allah talks about those people that, they denied, you know, they denied the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? And they denied, right? He said, wa kunna anukadhibu bi yawmiddin. And that what we used to deny the reality uh, of the last day, that the day of judgment, right? Hatta atan al yaqeen, right? And then, Certainty came to us, فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ However, now that certainty has come to them, it will not benefit them, even the intercession of those who can intercede. شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ Who is Shaf? Who is شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
right? Who is certainly one of those who is, is given permission by Allah to intercede. And so you have others like Imam al nawawi Imam al qadi Iyad, and others when they are referring to uh, these verses and when they were referring to this hadith, right? They're, they are saying that there's no justification that one, he ever uh, recanted his shirk and that he embraced Islam. Two, that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, that he, uh, he made an intercession for him to remove him from the fire. Three, that Allah Ta'ala is saying that once people have, that's who they are, just as the story of Ibrahim salam and his father, initially he made a promise to his father that he would make dua to him. However, when it became clear that his father was was Adu Allah, that he was a mushrik and that was never going to change, then Ibrahim accepted this fact. He accepted this fact. And so Allah did not reproach him because, okay, he made a promise, as Allah says about all the munafiqeen, سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَسْتَغْفَرْتَ لَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ لَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ and so we have other ayat in the Qur'an that prove that simply because the Prophet ﷺ is given this permission to intercede, it is not done just kind of carte blanche as we say. That the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ is always going to be according to the, it's, the, the final decision is always rests with Allah. And so as he tells the Prophet ﷺ in Surah Al-Munafiqun, right? Whether you pray for them or don't pray for them, Allah will never forgive them. Meaning that what? Your intercession, you can do it or not do it. There are some people, that the affair is out of your hands. And so when we look at the comprehensive evidence, it is clear that Abu Talib died a kafir and that he is in the lowest part. I mean, he's in the, the least part, was removed from the lowest part of the fire and was placed in the least part of the fire but he is still huwa finnar he is indeed in the fire according to the authentic statements of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so again this is important because now we are going to hand out awards to people which to be quite honest i'm not saying that that person that they were giving the award to. I'm not saying, just as the Prophet ﷺ acknowledged what his uncle did, I'm not saying that person didn't do good things and that that person wasn't helpful to the Muslim community. I'm not denying that whatsoever. However, I think it's actually also a slap in the face to give a person an award that's in the name of a person that Allah has said that what? That person or that the, the Messenger of Allah والسلام, has said that they are in the fire. And as we said yesterday, the Prophet, you know, uh, the Prophet وسلم, does not speak of Hawa. Right? He is what? It is Wahyun uh, Yuha. He is only a person that speaks and makes decisions according to the inspiration that Allah gives him through revelation. So to to repeat myself, right? The Qur'an is wahi and the aqwal of the Prophet sallallahu are also wahi, right? That they are both revelation. And so it's, it's, it's actually kind of a, 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 an eerie insult in some ways to give a person an award. I mean, if the person did something good, just let them give them an award. Why do you need it to be the Abu Bakr, the Abu Jahl, the, the, why does it need to be those things? If the person did good and they are still alive, just simply give them the award. Or we give you the Muslim Community Helper Award. Fine. Right? Um, but also for Muslims to suddenly jump up and say, well, you know, there's this or that argument. Okay. Based on what? Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. وصلي وسلم وبارك الله سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم